Hello, my name is Neil Thompson. I'm a Sony independent expert, or ICE. Uh, I've worked for Sony for many years in the past, and I'm here today at ProKit in West London. We're introducing uh, some more members of the XD Cam family of camcorders. The first one here is the, uh, the PMW 400, which is uh, new, fresh, straight out of the box, and fits neatly into the, the, the range of um, XD Cam camcorders, somewhere just under the PMW 500, which many people will already be familiar with. Um, but between the, obviously, logically, between the 300 and the 500, you would find the PMW 400. So what's different about this particular machine here? Um, it's, it's, it'll be familiar to anyone who's used a shoulder mount Sony camcorder in the past. It, it comes from a long heritage of two thirds inch uh, three chip camcorders that, that tick all the boxes for, for high end HD um, broadcast production. Looking at the lens on this particular model we have here, this is the, the K for kit version of the, the PMW 400 and comes with this 16 times Fujinon lens. It offers a number of new features. It's uh, an autofocus lens, which works very well, very nicely. But if you don't like autofocus, there's a simple click stop on the lens there that gives you an end to end fully stopped, very smooth action, manual focus ring there. It also has um, a, a very smooth servo on the zoom. It gives you a very good slow track on the zoom, this particular lens. And it also talks ALAC or automatic lens aberration correction. It passes on information between the lens to the camera to correct for any colour fringing that you might find on the lens. The mount itself, standard two thirds inch, 12 pin connector, and, and you could fit any of the, the huge range of B4 two thirds inch lenses to this camcorder. The camera itself, um, fairly familiar in size and shape, a little bit different to the 500. Probably easiest if I go through a couple of the differences between the 400 and the 500. The main one, starting at the front end, is that this camera has CMOS image sensors. Still 2 thirds inch, 1920 by 1080, but a different manufacturing technology that um, gives it a very low signal to noise ratio, this particular camera. It's very quiet. Uh, the CMOS sensors, in conjunction with a 3D noise reduction system, better than all that 2D noise reduction system you might be used to on previous cameras, uh, nudges the signal to noise ratio up to about 60 dBs, which is very quiet indeed. CMOS sensors inherently have some, um, uh, tend to produce artifacts such as uh, flash banding if, if there's a lot of flash photography in shot. A couple of features about this camera, it, it reads the sensor very quickly, so that is kept to a minimum. And in addition to that, in the latest software, there's a flash band correction circuit that uh, can correct to a degree for that kind of uh, effect, which is nice. So it's CMOS sensors. Um, it's very much similar in terms to, uh, of codecs to the, the PMW 500. It ticks that 50 megabits per second box for its MPEG-2 recording modes uh, and uh, in its um, uh, uh, universal disk format recording mode it will record MXF wrapped files at 50 megabits per second onto SBIS cards, the same as the, the PMW 500. It has a future proofing option though for this camera. Spring of next year, 2014, you will be able to upgrade this camera to record XAVC um, files uh, using a totally new codec that will become available for the camera, uh, free of charge upgrade, and that will enable you to record XAVC 10 bit intra frame uh, 100 megabits per second uh, uh, codec, which is a, a nice addition to the. Um, uh, the family of codecs built into the uh, current generation of camcorders. This gives you the chance to um, uh, take advantage of the, the, the new features of codecs such as XAVC, which are a bit, bit uh, more sophisticated, a bit cleverer than the MPEG-2 uh, recording codec, which is a good, solid, sturdy way of recording as it is, but AVC can offer you a few extra bits and pieces. And for a given data rate, you'll get a very high picture quality using XAVC. And as I say, it also ticks those boxes, 10-bit intra-frame recording, if that's uh, particularly important to you. So there's a whole degree of future-proofing going on here. Most importantly, perhaps, for the, the, the camera operator, the viewfinder on this camera is, is a really nice unit. Its um, um, main feature, well, it's got a lot of flippity uppityness for a start. You can flip it that way, and you can flip it that way, and uh, there's, a, there's a button on the side of the camera that will enable you to... Um, flip the image so that it comes back around the right way around when you do that. Uh, so it's, it's a nice big screen 
and it's also high resolution as well. It's quarter HD, so it's, uh, you just need to look down the, the viewfinder here to, to see the, the vast improvement in, in the, uh, the technology in the viewfinder, which obviously is pretty important if you're going to be spending a lot of time staring down, uh, down the viewfinder at your pictures. It's uh, useful to be able to get them in focus, that kind of thing, apparently. We were talking about future proofing just a minute ago uh, and saying how the, the new XAVC codec uh, guarantees this camera a path forward into uh, all sorts of new areas. Um, if we look at the other side of the camera, there's a, a mysterious little panel here with a little screw on the, on, in the side of it. And underneath there, there's a little multi-pin connector. And that is our way into the world of cloud computing, which apparently is the, uh, the future. The idea is that there's a, a little wireless adapter that bolts onto the side of the camera there, about the size of a packet of fags, and in the top of it, two slots for dongles of various flavours, a Wi-Fi dongle and um, a, a mobile phone dongle, 3G, 4G, LTE, different flavours of mobile phone technology will, will slot into that um, uh, uh, adapter on the side of the camera there, which gives you a connection to the net. Now, depending on how fast that connection is, that will enable you to upload either the full res uh, image files off your, uh, uh, your S by S cards, or the adapter itself will generate proxy images from the full res uh, material uh, at a much lower data rate, which can be also uploaded if you haven't got the bandwidth to, um, to upload the full res images. And once those are uploaded to a cloud server, they can be accessed by anyone anywhere who has permission to access them. So this is a very simple and relatively inexpensive way of, of getting pictures back to wherever it may happen to be, whether it's at a simple low-res proxy image uh, file size or the full, full um, image resolution, depending on the kind of bandwidth you have available via your mobile phone connection or Wi-Fi connection. We were talking about the viewfinder before and how good that viewfinder is and the way you can flip it up to see the image. Because that viewfinder is so good, there's no real need for a, a flip-out screen on the side of the camera here. So the screen here, just on this particular camera, unlike the 500, uh, doesn't show you the, uh, the playback image or anything, but just gives you time code, audio levels, meters, information of that nature, but doesn't flip out to become an extra screen because you've got this extremely nice viewfinder here to look at. A um, couple of other differences, there's um, two SDI, HD-SDI connectors on the back of the, uh, the camera here which uh, makes it easier if you've got a, a location monitor and uh, another bolt-on uh, device that needs an SDI feed. And finally, there's the option to put onto the back of the camera uh, either a triax or a fibre uh, studio adapter. So if you need to integrate these cameras into a studio system, for a college or a university or a flyaway kit or a, a corporate event kind of production. There's a, a really cost-effective, sensible way of doing that. Uh, nice and neat and tidy, and you can choose either to go with, uh, with Triax connectors, which uh, the cable is, is um, very widely available and widely used, or a fiber optic cable to connect you back to a base station. So that's the PMW 400. A very smart, very nice flexible system with a lot of new future options, uh, nice new viewfinder and uh, a, a family history that fits really neatly in, in with the PMW 500 and the PMW 300 and right back to the EX1 and the EX3 as well.